Hot Trends, Hot Topics in Cosmetic Surgery 2024. I get asked this a lot, especially at the new year. So welcome back to Roark Knows Podcast. I'm Dr. Rod Roark, a board-certified plastic surgeon in Dallas, Texas. So let's talk about some hot trends in cosmetic surgery. And are they really hot trends? Well, let's, let's go look at them. I think one of the things that I see more and more of since you know, the pendulum always swings. It's from less to more. But now, less is more. And I see that so much now in the fillers. And because we've seen so many pillow faces, so many overdone faces. And now we're seeing that fillers aren't necessarily biodegradable. They do last a long, long time, and sometimes they can cause problems, especially in the lymphatics around the tear trough areas and the lips, and you can't just melt them anymore. So don't overdo them. So I think that's a good trend. Less is becoming more, and I think that's so true in all of the things we're doing. You know, smaller breast implants and smaller buttock augmentation because not only is that better but it's safer and it looks better and it lasts longer i mean anytime you're doing extreme things in plastic surgery they just don't bear out and look good and remember every time as a plastic surgeon you're doing something you're putting your signature on saying that's what i'm representing and what i do so i really don't do anything that i think goes out of what my aesthetic endpoint is for looking good that's why i i, I don't do overdone lips. I don't overdo their cheeks. It just doesn't look good and it doesn't age well. So less is more fillers, less is more Botox, and, and less is more implant size. And and when we're talking about Botox, you know, the over the overdone Botox frigid look where you she can't even the patient can't even move, that's not a good look. People don't like that. They want a natural look. So and all you have to do is go to the person's website or their social media. If the patients look weird, I wouldn't go there, okay? And the corollary of that is the refined natural look, you know, and that goes now also with breast surgery and also as, you know, as a rhinoplasty and facelift expert, people want to look natural from their brow, their eyes, to their lower face and neck, and that's why I, I like to rejuvenate the face with their forehead, eyes, face, and neck, and even their nose in, in one sitting if, if, the, if that's what the patient desires. And I think that's important because it gives them a more natural look. As you can see from these patients, it gives them a natural look and appeal versus piecemealing and doing just the lower face or just the eyes. I think in a patient that's in their 50s, you may want to consider doing all of those because it gives them a more natural, youthful look. And the role of fat in these is so important. Less is more. Selective facial fat in these areas, especially the nasal labial folds, is critical. And buccal fat, buccal fat is overdone, so I say no to a lot of buccal fat removal. Uh, smaller breast implants, yes, especially in patients that really, really are petite because otherwise, you're never looking at their face, and, and that's not a good thing. And you want to just make it so that it looks good and natural on them. And then a safer and smaller buttock augmentation done subcutaneously. We've really worked hard to make sure it's safer. And in doing so, breast body, a buttock augmentation has also become smaller, and it looks better, and it ages better. Now people that had the big buttock augmentations, they're taking out that fat, and that's not, a, that's not an easy thing to do. Just like trying to take out filler, that's not easy either. So more defined, high definition liposuction, that's also critical. In the age of Ozempec and more body contouring that's finesse, it's good to just get a natural look from liposuction. So, those are all things that give you a natural, more refined breast, body, face, and nose look. I think that's a good, I think that's not only a hot topic, it's a trend. The other thing is simplifying skincare. How many more times do we need to have 17 things to do in the morning and night? That's just not reasonable, nor is it possible. I think the simplified skincare is something that you can stick to and it works. 
you know, you can do your uh, you can do your morning, you know, moisturizers and evening moisturizers, but don't forget, you know, the cardinal three are the use of antioxidants, especially of any any type of aging damage to your face, and the use of sunscreens that really really help protect you from the burning part of their face, and and then the retinols, the, the vitamin A derivatives that help turn over your skin to keep it looking young and youthful. Those are all the cardinal three that I think are most important. Now, there is a new one that's probably really going to put each of these into warp drive, and that's exosome-derived therapy. These are the messengers that help augment all of our skin care treatments, that help augment the retinols, help augment the antioxidants, and driving them into the, into the cell so that they can actually work better and faster. It's kind of your rapid recovery messenger. And I think that's a new a addition to that. And I prefer to use uh, one called Platelet, which is platelet-derived. It's uh, scientifically based uh, uh, platelet-derived um, exosomes from, uh, uh, from the Mayo Clinic, and it's a phenomenal treatment. And then the other thing is, if you want to rapidly put on or uh, improve your skin, is doing broad-based light or, or uh, intense pulse light early and often, and, and that's prejuvenation. And really, this has some incredible science behind it already, and actually can change your skin genome and make it look more youthful if you do it frequently, two to three times a year. This intense pulse light is not a laser, but it helps to turn over rapidly your skin and actually gives your uh, genes a pause to allow them to rejuvenate. So those are very important things to do. So simplifying skin care work, sunscreens, retinol, antioxidants. And then the other thing that I think is really important is, um, is the ability to do less aggressive non-surgical therapy. Just like surgery, we've gone through such aggressive therapy. Now we're thinking about doing less aggressive non-surgical therapy. And that means you know, knowing that we want to preserve all the fat we can in our face and cheek. In our neck, we can remove some of it. So you have to do more refined microneedling. And you can use the power of microneedling to drive the exosomes or any other skincare products into the deep dermis. And then the use of less or no kybella, which is, you know, the, the bile acid that actually people have used to inject into the face and to the neck to actually reduce fat. I really don't like that technology. I think that's a technology that probably should not be used very often because if you want to get rid of fat in your neck, just use simplified, simple liposuction. It's just much safer and easier to do. And then less Botox. Now, we have refined the art of Botox so much in the past two decades that we can precisely correct mandibular or masseter hypertrophy. We can inject these areas. We can inject along the platysma with microtox. And we can precisely use Botox the way it should be used versus, you know, putting so much Botox everywhere so they can't move their eyes, they can't move their brows. So more refined use of Botox, and that means the injector better be good. So find someone who does this frequently and have them explain to you exactly what they can do for you and what you want done. And then less filler. Now, we've talked about this before, but I will tell you that it's important to put less filler into the face because it's much more long-lasting than we think, and it has to be precisely placed by an expert injector. So less is more. There's many different types of hyaluronic acid fillers. Some are high density. They need to go uh, higher particle. They need to go deeper. And some are more superficial and they're more elastic because they, they actually allow you to have more expressive aspects to your face. So that's why you need to go to someone that understands the rheology of all of these hyaluronic fillers and you can put the ones in that you need in the right places. And treating deep more than superficial if you're doing um, non-surgical therapy. And what I mean by that is if you're doing radio frequency like Morpheus, which is excellent, use it very superficially in, in the face so you don't, uh, in, in the face itself, so you don't get fat loss. And then in the neck, you can go deeper below three millimeters. And that's where you do want to get both fat uh, removal, but also collagenesis to tighten the skin. So 
less aggressive non-surgical therapy is really important. And then last is just things not to do. And I'll sum it up by saying don't do crazy stuff. You only have one face, one body, uh, one set of breasts. Don't ruin them or lose them. Because if you do, you can't get them back. You can't melt it anymore. And don't do thread lifts and, uh, and fox lifts and all these crazy things that make people look weird and different. And extreme plastic surgery, making you look like a Barbie or a Ken. That just doesn't work and doesn't look good. Or overdone BBLs, uh, buttock augmentations. You know, if it doesn't look good, don't do it. And I see so many people that have had that done, and you can't reverse that in many cases. And it can destroy their life and it can destroy you. I just don't think you should do it. I, I just, you know, if it's outside your realm of aesthetic result, don't do it. Don't do crazy stuff. So tell me your comments, see what you think, see what else you'd like to see, what trends that you see in, in your area of the world. Uh, I'm happy to comment on them. These are just my personal opinions on what I think looks good, uh, will look good on you. And I think the most important thing is you go see a, a board certified plastic surgeon that has your safety and your outcomes in mind first and foremost. Look at their website, go see them, go see several plastic surgeons and see someone that listens to you about what you can do and what you cannot do and be safe. Have a great one.